Hey, everyone, it's Russ Curtis, Professor of Counseling. I've got Katie Getz with me here again. Uh, Katie is a licensed clinical mental health counselor, supervisor. She's a licensed clinical addiction specialist and a bunch of other things, trained in EMDR, trauma training, and so forth. This is just going to be a role play video dealing with working with a caregiver for somebody with dementia or some type of cognitive decline. And Katie, I'll be the caretaker and I'll let you take it. Great, great. Okay, thanks Russ for meeting with me. Um, I know that you know, I know your partner. We've seen him here for a long time at the clinic. And um, first I just wanna say, we just really enjoy him and your family. So just glad that you're in our community. Um, and I know that you've been talking with our team and the providers um, and that you've done some, your partner's done some testing um, and that there has been some cognitive decline and yeah. that you, you're aware of that, yeah. Yeah, and yeah. so I just wanted to take a few minutes just to check in with you um, because we know how hard that can be on family members. Um, yeah. Yeah, it, it is hard. And I guess, I mean, you know, like sometimes he's fine um, and, and seems very uh, coherent and lucid. And then other times it's like he can't recall my name. And I mean, I can't recall names sometimes. So it's like, like what questions? I mean, like what did you like what questions did you ask to try to to find out that he may be experiencing these things? Yeah, yeah. Well, one, just that makes a lot of sense to me that it's like seems okay one minute and the next time it doesn't seem okay or he doesn't seem okay. And um, they did do the mini mental and I know they're also going to refer him to a neurologist and that's really common that they do some follow-up and they might do some um, further testing, which I think can be really great. It can, it can really let you know, like, okay, we know this for sure. They're going to really rule out any other medical causes. Um, and sometimes it's nice to know, like with some of the testing, what is the baseline so that six months from now or a year from now with your help and with his input, we kind of know have things shifted a lot or have things not changed that much. Mm -hmm. Um, because what we know about cognitive decline sometimes is that there's not a perfect map, which is why your experience is like, he does know who I am or who this person was, but then another time he didn't know names. Um, and I hear you pointing to also like, there's some typical aging that can occur where we might forget things or things don't come as quickly, but then there's also some signs of cognitive decline that can seem similar, but actually we know are pretty different. Um, and those things can be that um, we might get disoriented around like the time or the year or who's president right now. And often those are some of the questions they ask in the testing. Okay. And someone might not know the month or the date and different than typical aging. Sometimes we can find that file in our brain, like what was his name or what, yeah. what was that new piece of equipment we got? And our brains can kind of go and find that. But sometimes with cognitive decline, we're not able to go pick up that file again and figure out whose name that was or what object it was. Okay. So that that sounds similar to when I was playing sports. If I if I took a knock, the the docs would or the the trainer would pull me in and do like who's the president and the months backwards, it seems like I had to recall and just to determine if it was a concussion. Yeah, you got it. You got okay. it. And they're really checking on, you know, I think we often think of cognitive decline as just memory. Yeah. Like, can I remember something? And that's sometimes true. But it's also like how our brain might work and the ways that it prioritizes things or putting, um, you know, even like packing for a trip. It really takes a lot of steps in our brains to think about that. Yeah, it's like, well, when am I leaving? What is the temperature going to be like? how many outfits might I need? And that's actually a lot of steps that our brain goes through. And when our brain is working pretty well, we can do those steps pretty quickly. But if there has been some cognitive decline, actually that's a pretty tough task that has lots of steps to do. And I don't know if you've noticed any changes there. Yeah, I do notice like with, it doesn't change clothes much. Uh, I have to kind of ask about that and that can sometimes create some tension. Um, hygiene seems to be an issue and yeah. I don't know if you have any recommendations for that or. Yeah. yeah, 
Yeah, that you've noticed that some typical things that he used to be able to do on his own have been harder. Yeah. yeah. Well, when I already hear the wisdom and you saying like, I'm trying to ask him about these things and it seems kind of tough in that moment about what to ask or when. Um, so I'd love to share a couple tips with you if it's helpful. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So to start with, sometimes some of these things, we um, this might seem simple, but it's not. Like, is this a real problem? Like for, for this moment, can he wear this sweatshirt two days in a row? Is that okay? And sometimes yeah. the answer to you is going to be like, yeah, that can happen. He can wear his sweatshirt two days in a row. And then there's going to be other times where you might think, you know what, it really is time for a shower and we want to keep him healthy and we want to make sure his hygiene's okay and that we do want to address it. So we say like, we want to address it like at the best timing possible, which is not easy. But um, if he's near the closet, if he's near the clothes, right? Yeah. His brain might do a little bit better job of associating that. Um, and instead of saying like, aren't you going to change clothes? You might say, hey, I, I, I know that you were going to change. Did you want to wear this or this? And you can really give some real options. Like, did you want to wear the t-shirt or do you want to wear the sweatshirt? In case anybody's having trouble identifying objects, then they're picking between two things and they can't be wrong. Gotcha. Right. And if we, if, if he doesn't really know, it might be hard to say, I don't know, or I don't remember. But if we put two things out, um, that can be a way. And that, that can translate to like the kitchen. If you're having lunch, you might say, oh, the leftovers are in the fridge, but that's actually a lot of steps. I've got to get to the refrigerator. I've got to open it. I've got to find the shelf. I've got to find, are these the leftovers? But it might be that you say, hey, did you want a sandwich or did you want a soup for lunch? Yeah. Um, or you might in the kitchen, look at your watch and go, oh, look, it's lunchtime. It'll be time for us to eat. And being very specific within proximity can be something that's helpful. Okay. That is helpful. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, that was awesome. Uh, anything you wanted to share? Any commentary with this of what you were trying to do? I mean, it, it seemed pretty obvious, like, hey, um, kind of recognize where the person is and that um, at, at an earlier stage or maybe even with kids, it'd have been great to give them all these choices. But in this particular situation, we might need to have more forced choice, like, yeah. Sweatshirt or t-shirt, uh, soup sandwich, um, because yeah. that's going to cause less stress to your family member who's in cognitive decline to be able to mm -hmm. say, oh, I've seen sandwich soup. I can choose. Yeah. 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 No, that's, I think you're right on. And I think just naming that this isn't what we might have expected when it's our partner or this is our parent. And so it can be a real big shift for somebody if you've been, let's say you've been married to someone for 50 years and they've made their own decisions and, yeah. and now you're in this spot that that can be a really big shift. So I would name that and then maybe never leave that session with a family without really saying like, this is really hard or in the world of Alzheimer's, they often say there's two patients. Sometimes I share that with folks, yeah. the second patient being the caregiver. Um, because they are picking up and holding so much more in something that can be really unpredictable when there's cognitive decline. Well, he was fine today. He knew yeah. this today, but then all of a sudden we're in another moment. And to just really validate that and then really spend some time on who are their supports, who can they get a break from, who can come and um, be with their loved one if they're at the place where their loved one can't be alone so they can go somewhere. Um, and really getting them some self-care and support so that their world doesn't get so small that now they're showing up at the clinic with lots of stress or health-related issues because they've really had to neglect themselves in some way. That's helpful. Yeah. All right. Thank you. I'm going to, thanks for the role play, Katie, and I'm going to yeah. stop. Yeah.